Plenty of positives from that result yesterday. I've spoken about how West Ham have really had to put in a good performance, how I would have liked to have seen one. And I, and I do believe we saw that yesterday. And that in turn gave us a really good result in terms of competing for those European spots. And we've seen where Wolves are this season. We've seen how in good form they've been. For West Ham to get a result, albeit just a 1-0, was crucial. And it's always going to be a tight game. We're at home. We're expected to create from possession. I thought West Ham out of possession were very good. And I thought in possession, we did really well. And, you know, coming into this game, it did feel a case of Moyes has got to twist a little bit. He, he has to plug holes. I, I, I mentioned about maybe Lanzini dropping into the double pivot, maybe playing Vlasic as a false nine. To be honest, I actually think Moyes got it bang on with that 5-3-2. Not a lot of people would have seen it. I think that there are multiple elements to it tactically before we get onto the players that I thought caused Wolves real issues. And, and it's credit to Moyes how he was able to implement it. I thought West Ham playing with Antonio alongside Bowen. I think it took the pressure off Antonio from a build-up play perspective. I think having someone near him that he could work off of, someone to retain the ball, I think took the pressure away from him. I actually think because of the width that West Ham created with the wing-backs, Antonio's less likely to look wide into areas, which I don't have an issue with. But if we're talking from conserving energy and being efficient, I think it benefited him. I thought the wing-backs in building up from pressure were superb. I thought it was a brilliant idea. Of course, we'll get onto individual performances, but I thought the way that Pablo was able to control the ball in tight areas to play through the lines, his build-up with Lanzini and Declan Rice and that whole left-hand side, not only in our defensive third, but in their final third, having the security for Creswell to get forward in an inverted or an overlapping position, Gave us quality from wide areas in terms of delivery. And it gave us a chance to overload against the back five that's very diff difficult to break down. And I thought in terms of that midfield three, and we'll get on to Lanzini, I thought Suchek having Lanzini and Rice, having two players alongside him, took away the, the amount of energy and the work rate that he had to cover. And the same goes for Declan Rice in the last game. I thought we had freedom in terms of being able to, to win the ball, to be aggressive. I thought the shape of the midfield three was fantastic at times, how high they were. But also when you're talking about Rice and, and Lanzini playing out from pressure, offering options to our back three, we, we completely negated Wolves' press from the front three. And it could have been a slippery slope. You know, I know it was a weak in front three, but the way you look at it, Fabio Silva, Trink Trinkau, Huang Hee Chan, players that aren't naturally direct, it looked more of a false forward three than anything. So they could have dropped into pockets, but I, I thought it was fantastic. And we'll get on to sort of individual performances. The way that, that Lanzini worked in that game, I thought not only did he offer himself in terms of building up possession, I thought the way that West Ham went man for man on their back three, and we saw this on numerous occasions in that first half, hurt them badly. They couldn't get the ball to Neves and they couldn't get the ball to Dendonka, which would probably hurt them not having Matinho in the side. We go man for man against their back three. We pressed them. We got our wing backs ridiculously high and, and credit to Ben Johnson. I thought he was fantastic defensively and I do believe defensively he is our best right back, but it needs to be said whether Sufal shows that form that we saw before his injuries, we've now found out. But how aggressive Ben Johnson was in getting out to Marcel. They couldn't play out Wolves. They had to go long. We negated their build-up play in wide areas. And we simply created a chance where it was Kurt Zuma or Craig Dawson for Fabio Silva, which West Ham were always going to win. We were always going to regain possession and we were always going to keep that pressure on to create chances. Now, I think given the nature of the game... I didn't expect West Ham to create an incredibly amount of chances. I didn't think West Ham would create too many clear-cut chances. Having said that, I thought, again, with the formation, getting Antonio in half space, getting him central. We had a shot in the first half against Jose Sarr. We had a couple of deliveries into the box, which is difficult against the Wolves' back three, a, a back five that are so secure defensively. So I think it was always going to be tight. But I just felt that the likes of Johnson getting in beyond, I think at one point in that first half, he's come off of the right-hand side and he started making the run central. Just thought how intelligent that is to do and how aggressive that was to do. I always felt West Ham were... It could win that game because A, we were dominating it, but B, we have the quality and the guilt edge moments to win games like that. And Declan Rice cracks one off the bar. If that goes in, my head's completely and utterly scrambled. I thought second half, Wolves reacted. Now, they were more aggressive in getting the ball forward. I think they pushed their wing backs a lot higher. They pinned us back. Frustration in the ground. Completely understand it. But I think that's... 
that that's more of a response to what Wolves did rather than, than West Ham playing poorly. I think if you're going to be hypercritical, you may look at Antonio and say, as he began to fatigue, though that Wolves back three could play through our press. They were getting the ball into midfield. And as I've always said, I don't feel that West Ham as a team, even with that midfield three, we're going to engage massively in high areas. So we're always going to step off. We're always going to invite pressure. It's horrible to watch. It's tense. But I thought in terms of West Ham shape second half from a defensive standpoint, it was spot on. Pablo, again, on that left-hand side, he kept his position and he was aggressive when he could get forward. He pressed when he had an opportunity. And, and those little details make the difference. It means that the game isn't so... You aren't inevitably waiting for Wolves to score. Ag agreed towards the last 10 minutes, it did feel like when you bring on Jimenez and Neto and Podence, and in particular when they're getting in those, those half spaces and you, again, they're dragging the ball, they're carrying it across our midfield three. Th that midfield three, I've got to be on it. But I felt for large parts, even Manu's second half, when he's not getting on the ball as much and West Ham don't have much of the ball, he's still being disciplined. He's still pressing. He's still keeping his shape. These are all impressive things. And our goal really, whilst if you're a neutral, you say, well, Wolves have got defensive deficiencies there, which is highly unlike them. I thought West Ham's build up from those players that have been really good in possession, Cress, Fornals, even Antonio being able to just get that little bit of quality off to Suchek, who was released and able to go forward from a midfield three. Those things just clicked in that moment. And we had our chance and we took it. And Listen, to be honest, if, we, if we're being brutally honest, West Ham could have scored a lot more in that game. You know, I, I, it wasn't Bowen's greatest game by any stretch of the imagination. It, we're talking fine details here. A, a better weighted pass at points. A, again, a little bit more composure. West Ham can get the 2-0 the and that game's a lot more comfortable than perhaps it was in the end. But having said all of that, I, I just felt it was one of them games where we were in control. I genuinely believe that other than probably the last couple of minutes of that first half, I felt we dealt with most things admirably. I've got to touch on it because this would be completely remiss of me not to do so. Whilst there were a lot of good performances in there, I thought Kurt Zuma was absolutely outstanding. Genuinely. I just, in these last three games, he's been bang on. He's been bang on. And in that game, you know, okay, fair enough. You, you may give it up to the fact that you're not playing against a, an area dominant centre forward. Maybe that you would be with Jimenez. But having said all of that, I just felt his recovery tackles, his reading of the game, his positioning to get blocks in, his covering for his centre-backs. He did everything that you want him to do as a defender. And West Ham, in those central defensive positions, the centre-back roles, we've upped the levels. And Dawson's benefited from Zuma. And they're both playing off one another and they look a lot more comfortable. And I think that's been our strength in, in recent games. Whilst everything else has seemed to be a little bit nervy. But when you add that with everything that we did tactically to tweak it, some of the players' performances and, and the improvements and the tweaks that Moyes had to make to get the best out of the players that have been struggling, I do think it was a really good performance. And I think it will be a big three points come the end of the season. And listen, Wolves have, of course, they've got a game in hand and the, the, the gap could get shorter. It was so important West Ham didn't lose that game. To go and win it... When we're out of form, I just felt it was a big, big statement. I really did. So I'm really happy. You know, it's a tough week. Liverpool away. They've just won the Carabao Cup. Southampton again on Wednesday in the FA Cup. It always remains to be seen how far West Ham can go when playing consistently the same players over that. And it, and it tends to dwindle. But I have a little bit of hope. I do. I have a little bit of hope. I think, A, it's a bit of momentum. And B, we've seen Moyes tweak it. And it, it's just, it was that whole element of, it's not working. Let's change it. Shows you Moyes can do it. Of course he can. He's, he's got the ability to do it. And the players have the intelligence and quality, genuine quality to do it. So if it does become a case of West Ham have to tweak it in terms of formation and therefore there are different players to come in, then there is room for optimism. And listen, we shouldn't be in this situation. We shouldn't, shouldn't be sitting here saying, you know, we're we're lacking in this area. Again, Fredericks wasn't in the team today. I think he's injured. Sue fouls out. You may have a problem at right back or even right wing back at some points. Centre midfield options to come on. The list could go on. You talk about centre forwards, it's, it's glaringly obvious. However, it's less so square pegs, round holes. It's more so being intelligent and working with what you've got, which is very little and shouldn't be the case. But nonetheless, I don't want to take the gloss off a really, really good win. FA Cup Wednesday preview will be out on Tuesday. Southampton are in really good form, so it never gets easier. But listen, if you get that, 
you, you're only one step away from Wembley. So hopefully the players are, are bang up for it. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you've got this far, drop a like on the stream. Check out the West Ham Way Patreon account. Check out the West Ham Way website and subscribe to the West Ham Way YouTube channel.